Well, hey folks, how you doing today? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me. You know, I was at this 4th of July celebration yesterday up at the CU campus here in Boulder, Colorado. And uh, I wanted to go get a good you know, position to see the fireworks. And uh, it's right near the big stadium there, Folsom Field. And I ended up right near the physics building on the CU campus and I couldn't stop thinking about Edward Condon, The Condon Report, 1969. I mean, there I was right at the site. In 1969, the Air Force had hired Edward Condon and a group of uh, associates and consultants and other physicists to uh, evaluate whether the Air Force should continue to study UFOs or not. <clears throat> they paid him $500,000 to the, the project as a whole. And of course, that's a lot of money in 1969. That'd be millions of dollars now. And his conclusion was that, uh, you know, there was really nothing to the UFO subject. He looked at a limited number of cases from just a couple of years, uh, not even the most interesting cases from the Northern Tier sightings, you know, the UFOs over nuclear sites and so forth. And uh, I just thought of what a big failure academics has been to the whole UFO subject as a whole, because uh, really there has been a consistent message for the last 70 years from academia and the science community, which is basically what Edward Condon said. Uh, there's just nothing to it. They disparage the evidence. They disparage the witnesses. And here we are right now in 2019. And... It's making the media news. We're told that senators on the Senate Intelligence Committee have been briefed on this subject, even possibly President Trump. And you have to wonder what they're being told, because as a whole, we know very little about this subject from the standpoint of science and academia, because they haven't studied it in the open, in university settings. It's been classified for the most part. And this is what Hal Putoff told us last year at the SSE meeting in Las Vegas, that the government never got out of the UFO business. It just went deep black. The problem with that, as Hal told us, is we're not making any progress in understanding the phenomena because so the people involved are in their stovepipes. Uh, what you don't probably know about Edward Condon is he actually had been uh, a victim of McCarthyism. Did you know that? Uh, he, Condon, was actually famous for research in quantum mechanics. He was an expert in the field of quantum tunneling. And post-World War II, quantum mechanics was seen as a radical ideology. And as a quantum physicist, Condon had to go before one of these house communist review panels, loyalty panels, and they asked him, are you a, a, a radical? Do you believe in quantum mechanics? So did you see what's going on here? Post-World War II, physics changed so much from what it was before World War II. Before World War II, physics involved a couple hundred people from around the globe, and they would engage in debates on the nature of reality. Think of the Bohr... Uh, Einstein debates about the nature of quantum mechanics and, and, and reality, uh, Heisenberg versus Schrodinger and so forth. Uh, there were huge debates at the theoretical level about what reality really was made of and different versions and interpretations of quantum mechanics. Think of David Bohm and pilot wave alternative theories. And we've talked about some of these recently in my other videos about, uh, multiple, uh, about many worlds interpretation and so forth. But post-World War II, it all changed. So much funding went into nuclear uh, weapons, uh, nuclear research, and there was a huge uh, pressure to move away from so-called physics foundations, quantum mechanics foundations, kind of the, the larger questions of what quantum mechanics meant, how to interpret it in terms of the world that we perceive every day, and the nature of reality overall. And the dominant mantra in physics became shut up and calculate, which is 
don't question why the Schrodinger equation works. Don't question the nature of the particle wave duality and these kind of st really strange and weird results we get from quantum mechanics in terms of the view of reality that we perceive with our eyes, that things don't seem as solid as they do when we look at them uh, physically with our own physical senses. But the idea was, if you want to succeed in physics, stop questioning the way things work, stop questioning reality, and just shut up and calculate, and you'll get your funding. And there was a huge amount of funding from the National Science Foundation. And this permeated the entire science institutions throughout our society. And more and more, everything became oriented towards just calculate, figure out how things work, get the data, run the statistics, and stop questioning things overall, especially, you can imagine, in the 1950s. Well, Condon was kind of caught up in this, and he lost his security clearance because of his association with something as radical as quantum mechanics. He wanted to get his security clearance back, and this could have been one of his motivations for participating in this Air Force study to decide whether Project Blue Book should keep going or not. But you can see one of the consequences of this huge momentum in the direction of applied research and away from any theoretical questions was a complete, uh, essentially a ban on the study of UFOs in academia. We know from the government documents now and the research done by other researchers that the government was extremely interested in this topic. They had the Robertson panel in 1952, which included physicists uh, who were familiar with quantum mechanics and so forth. And they were studying what to do about the UFO situation. And even though they didn't understand what it was, the conclusion was get the public away from being interested in this topic, ridicule it, make fun of it, because the public could panic if a foreign adversary used this in a way to use it in a sort of a hostile way, the UFO topic. And, and there was a real concern with the Soviet Union uh, post-World War II. They were extremely aggressive in attempting to undermine just about every democracy around the planet uh, on a kind of continuing basis. So this wasn't without uh, any sort of reasonable basis. The long-term consequence was that academia moved farther and farther away from studying something that it should have been studying. The sciences should have been studying these UFOs uh, to look at them as realistically, scientifically as possible, uh, not to ban the research on this topic. I mean, just look at what happened to people like John Mack in the psychology department uh, at Harvard University. I mean, he had to hire an attorney, Danny Sheehan, to defend himself from literally being fired from Harvard University for his study uh, of uh, abduction research. We go back farther, we had James McDonald uh, from the University of Arizona, uh, astronomer, who really paid the ultimate price for his interest in this subject. He continually went against the skeptics and the scoffers to try to get the government to pay more attention to this topic, and it ended up with him uh, committing suicide over this because of the attacks that he received from Phil Klass and others. Uh, there have been many other academics who also were basically uh, really blackballed and blackmailed into not looking at this topic. Um, and in my own field in sociology, I mean, this isn't a topic I ever even heard about while I was in school. But I can tell you that uh, as someone who studies statistics, there was this overall push to only use Gaussian normal distributions. Now, the normal distribution, the Gaussian distribution, is called the bell curve. And it's associated with many sorts of phenomena and processes we know physically uh, on Earth that things tend to cluster around the mean. And as you go towards the tails, you get uh, fewer and fewer data that reside in the tail. So you basically focus on the average. You focus on the mean. Okay, so what you do in social science when you have data that don't fit the bell curve is you throw the data out. Uh, it's considered to be outliers. So what we've been doing for decades and decades is throwing away the data that doesn't really fit our preconceived ideas about the way reality works, uh, the way social processes work in the case of sociology, and basically limit it to the mean. The problem is in the tails, there's a lot of interesting information 
that you may not be understanding of things that could be real processes, even though they could be rare, they could have large term impacts. This is what we call black swan events, what Nassim Taleb talks about, why I called my book Black Swan Ghosts. We've been ignoring this UFO phenomena for decades now. And people in academia are especially guilty because they've been playing the game uh, in academic institutions, the game of getting ahead, which is you want to get funding, mainly from the National Science Foundation, also National Institutes for Health, and other large grant-giving institutions. They have dominated the themes that academics have been studying for so long. Because if you're in academia, I remember being told is if you don't do this and you don't do that, you won't get promoted, you won't get ahead, you won't get tenure. And so you're kind of in this rat tunnel where you're focusing on this prize way out there in your career once you get your PhD, which is you want to get promoted, you want to get the awards, you want to get tenure. And what it does is turn academia into a type of prostitution. Uh, No joke, because you're basically using your mind to do what somebody else wants you to do. You're basically selling your mind. And in this case, you're selling your mind to the universities, the universities sold their souls to the government so they could get funding. So everyone is on this gravy train of government funding, which is an anti-UFO message. And so we end up in this situation in 2019 where we know that Congress is getting briefed on the subject and uh, the public as a whole really doesn't understand anything about this subject. I mean, we're at this baby step level. Now, those of us who've been studying this for a while, I'm not saying that we totally have the answers to this, but we've been engaging in the uncertainties of the lack of knowledge. We know how much we don't know. But looking last night around at the crowd around the July 4th celebration, all these students that were around looking at the fireworks, I realized how little they know about the subject, how little they've been told. And what a bad job universities have done even just bringing this subject up. It's been basically like a prohibited topic (laughs) that you can't study. And science has basically completely failed us to provide any sort of idea of what these objects are, what the intent is of these objects, why are they here? Uh, And it got to the point now where Navy pilots are filing official complaints that they feel it's a flight hazard for them to be flying in these areas off the east coast and the west coast of the united states because they could collide with one of these objects at least that was the case in the east coast and it's not just on the east coast and the west coast that you're going to find these tic tacs and flying cubes i knew a guy here in boulder Vern, that used to just point his uh, high resolution camcorder at the sky one area of the sky in a parking lot at safeway for a full day and then later look at what he got he showed me some of this video and it was incredible there were things like tic tacs things like flying cubes that just be hovering there hanging out right next to a cloud you wouldn't be able to see them with the naked eye but you could see them with this camera when it was zoomed even little black triangles that would go by i'm pretty sure at this point that our sky is full of these uh, ufos uaps you want to call them uovs anomalous uh, alien operated vehicles whatever you want to call them, AAVs, anomalous aerial vehicles, uh, whatever you want to call them, these things have been around for quite a while. And all of a sudden, because our sensors have gotten so much better, media, internet, we can't really deny the phenomena exists anymore. But theoretically, and uh, at a larger level, kind of at an existential level, we have really haven't even started the dialogue in our society about what this topic is. And it all goes back to the Cold War, uh, national security, state, and this kind of censorship of academia and science to uh, steer people away from this topic. And so we're going to have to recover from this now and get back on the ball and figure out what is going on. Because if we don't start working on this, there are probably many other societies on the planet that would be happy to figure this out. and to start benefiting from it. All right, well, listen, thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, We'll see you in the next video, and take care for now. Bye.